Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Chasing 518. Today, we put a Chevy alternator on a Ford Falcon. Bought this 1963 Ford Falcon for my wife two years ago for her birthday. Just finally got it kind of roadworthy. She'd been driving it a lot. And lo and behold, the generator gave up. I think something in the regulator malfunctioned and left, instead of cutting out, it stayed engaged. And we came out in the garage a couple hours later after she parked it to the generator, filling the whole garage with smoke. So we're gonna use that as a good excuse to upgrade the electrical system in this. And we're gonna pull out the antiquated generator and the voltage regulator and convert this thing over to a one wire Chevy alternator. Even when this system was working, at best it would make like 13.4 volts. And maybe, I mean, I never measured it, but best guess is that generator is probably good for like 35 amps or so. So we want to put, I want to put a better stereo in the car. I want to put an electric cooling fan on the radiator. We want the headlights to be brighter. So we're going to switch over to an alternator. It should be more reliable, more consistent. The first step of this project is gonna be getting the old generator and voltage regulator out of the car. Here we have the old belt driven generator. It only has a few wires on it. They run across the radiator support over to the voltage regulator. I picked up this uh, as a 10SI. It's a very common Chevy alternator from back in the day. This one's actually been retrofitted uh, as a true one wire. The regulator connection that you normally find on a 10 SI is, is gone and this it has a different aftermarket regulator inside. I got this from a friend that does a lot of starter and alternator work in my town and he tested it for me and I saw it pull 80 amps. So I, I feel good that this one's, um, I like giving him the business and I know that, that this alternator works. So all we have to do is Mount it, spin it with a belt, and attach this battery lug to either the battery or the starter solenoid, and we're good to go. It's a, a pretty simple system, pretty common. If it, if it ever dies, it's readily available at a parts store. There's a lot of different alternator models that people use to do one wire. You can use a 10SI, 12SI, a CS series, like a CS130. I think I've done this conversion with, with all of them over the years even put a CS-130 on a motorcycle once. But the 10 SI is gonna work good for this car. 80 amps is more than enough for the, the very few electronics I'm gonna be running. Normally you'd start a project like this with a disclaimer of disconnect the battery, but again, because this car tried to catch fire the other night, we disconnected the battery, took the battery out of the car. I don't think any other electronics were damaged. It was just back feeding the generator with current, essentially trying to turn it into an electric motor. So I am going to, while well, I'm doing all this, I'm gonna charge the battery I took out, but we're all disconnected. So I'll set up the camera on a mount and I'll just get to disconnecting. The generator's out. I'm gonna follow this wiring back as it runs. We'll separate it out from the, the headlight harness Strip the harness out, pull the voltage regulator, see what I'm left with. I don't wanna downplay the wiring side of this and make it sound like it's not intimidating because it is, right? It's, there's a lot going on here. It's trying to, you know, exchange technology from early 60s Ford to 70s Chevy. So I'll show you what, what we got here. So all I've done so far, once I pulled the generator was, these are the three wires that physically bolted to the generator. A red with black, a black, and a big yellow with black. They were all taped in with this power wire, the wire going to the horns. So all I've done is untape everything across to the voltage regulator. So now we can take these three generator wires out of the loom 
and I'm just gonna follow them across. I'm going to unbolt the voltage regulator, disconnect the wires off of it, which you'll realize are the ones going across. I'm gonna take the ground off of it, and then I'll show you what we're left with. So the top terminal on the voltage regulator is labeled battery, and if we pull that wire off, we realize that it It has a Y intersection right here. So this black lead is going over to the starter solenoid where it's on battery hot. And then this side of it is going into feed the engine compartment loom. So all it does is provide battery to the voltage regulator. So we'll leave that off. And then this next one here is labeled Field. And if we follow this wire, it goes directly to the generator to energize the field on it. So that will be coming out with the harness. This last large yellow with the black, if you remember, was part of the generator harness, so it will come off for good. However, it has a small yellow, uh, I think with a trace around it, I can't tell, it's so dirty. It has a small yellow on it that goes back into the loom as part of the um, the idiot light. So we're not gonna be using the in idiot light with this one wire alternator conversion. So I'll just be taping this up, cutting it and taping it into the loom. I'll be putting a voltmeter in this car eventually, uh, maybe a digital one as part of, part of the electronics for the accessories on it. So again, I'll just be cutting it, taping it up in the loom. third wire, there were three wires attached to the generator. The other one is this um, red with black or black with red, and it just goes to the ground on the radiator support or the uh, voltage regulator ground. So we'll pull it off and pull that wire out of the harness as well. That eliminates the ground wire. So now we have no wires left on the voltage regulator, so we can just go ahead and remove it completely. So again, this is uh, from the idiot light. And this was um, battery voltage for the regulator to do its job. So we'll just cut that, tape it, cut this, tape it, and then we'll close the loom all back up. And then we'll get working on mounting the new alternator. So here's everything that's going away for good. We're ditching the voltage regulator. This was the wire that went uh, from its ground all the way over and attached to the generator. We're also getting rid of the big yellow that goes over to the generator and then also the black field wire that went from the... I feel like I should mention in every video how frustrated I get with my GoPro. So I do all these videos on a GoPro 10. Occasionally I use my phone for a couple of clips, but uh, the battery percentage and how often the GoPro just shuts off for no reason frustrates me to no end. It just showed 30% battery a minute ago and then just turned. I bought my GoPro 10 new. Actually, I got it for my birthday from my wonderful wife. It shuts off randomly. When the battery says it's got like 30% left, left, it'll just shut off and say battery low. Lost a lot of footage because of that. It's very aggravating. I don't know if any of you have suggestions or tips on how to deal with a GoPro that just likes to shut off. But if you do, please drop it in the comments below. Help me out. Help me figure out this GoPro thing. The footage is great. The hyper smooth is amazing. Uh, but I don't know why. But I just The camera just likes to shut off a lot. I have to pull the battery out, put the battery back in, and then it seems to work again. But you can't do that if you're like in the middle of the race. We lost a lot of footage at KOH this last year because the camera just shut off and it was mounted to the dash and there was nothing I could do about it mid-race. All right, back to the alternator conversion. So again, here's everything we're getting rid of. Voltage regulator, and then these three wires that run from generator to voltage regulator. Uh, the part of this conversion that I think is going to take the longest is physically mounting the new alternator and getting it aligned with the other pulleys 
So I'm gonna work on that next, now that I've got all the old parts out and all the wiring stripped out. I'm hoping I'll be able to reuse some part of the, the old generator bracket that bolts to the frame, maybe even the adjusting arm, but I don't know. I'm gonna get the camera mounted up for you guys and throw it in time-lapse mode and you can just watch me suffer through this in, in high speed. Okay, I mocked up the alternator, just held it up there. This is the original generator bracket. And if I, if I mount it like that, it puts the alternator about an inch too far back. So I think what I'm gonna do is just cut this back ear off. And then I think I'm gonna slot these bolt holes out in the middle to give me like a fore and aft adjustment so that I can align the belt right. And then once I figure it out for double shear, I'll probably recycle this tab and put it wherever it lines up so that I've got a double shear here. And then it looks like the adjusting arm actually lines up right. So I'm gonna cut, cut this off and then slot those back so that I can slide this forward. And that'll put the alternator in alignment with the pulleys. And then I can start mocking it up. Okay, so again, I didn't I didn't really feel the need to nail a perfect hole. I just wanted to give myself some some wiggle room so I didn't have to keep trial and error. So there we go. There's a couple of holes slotted out. Make sure the bolt fits and then get it mocked up on the block. All right, I just mocked the alternator up with my new holes in the, the old generator bracket. And the problem I'm having is I can't rotate the body of the generator up enough to use the factory slotted bracket and use the same belt I have because the body of the alternator crashes into the, the top of this bracket. So what I'm gonna have to do, and where I need to put the double shear is right where this bolt is. So what I'm gonna end up doing is making a new bracket. I use some flat bar to grab these two holes, but then I'm gonna have to put the double shear up above it by maybe an inch or so. That way the alternator body can roll inward and so that I can get it in double shear. So I'll pull this off as kind of a template and get started on making that bracket. Saved you the trouble and whipped up this bracket with the camera off. So I've got slotted holes for the block down here to give me belt alignment. And then I was able to make a double shear and clearance the bolt head for that one because you can see it lands right over the top of it. So this should work. I'll put it in and see how it fits. I can tell that the alternator needs to go forward, which means this adjuster is not gonna work as it is so i'm gonna have to put some sort of dog leg in it or space it out at the water pump i think it's gonna be easier to put a z in it so i think i'll just take it off and and throw a quick little dog leg in it on the vise if i get it off without dropping the bolt but of course it's a long bolt that goes through the water pump so i'm gonna have to pull tire fan blade off to to do it okay brackets been modified for what i think is the last time i've got it tightened down i like the i don't know how well this is going to show on the camera but the belt alignment looks pretty good i've still got it loose so i'll throw some tension on it and then i just need to 
Uh, put the battery back in and come up with a cable to go from the starter solenoid down to the battery lug on the alternator. Then put the battery in, wire it up and see if it charges and then I'll, I'll tuck those wires away and tape all this loom up when I know it's all done and works good. The okay, belt is tight, uh, alignment looks pretty good. So I'm gonna get all these other parts out of the way, get the battery in here. I might even have a cable in my junk drawer to test this. Um, yeah, I think I'll throw it in time-lapse mode and clean up some of this. I got a charge cable on. I'm using just a six gauge cable it's about 18 inches long from the battery lug on the alternator to it's connected to the hot post of the starter solenoid which is essentially a battery connection so right here we've got 12.74 volts i've been charging this battery all day let's go ahead and fire this thing up and see if it charges these are not in play and not touch anything so again i still need to tape those up And what we won't have anymore is a charge light right here. Turn on the uh, headlights and see if voltage changes at all. It's about the biggest load I can really put on this thing. There we go, there's, there's headlights at idle. It's right in there. So the best, the best it would ever do before was 13.6 maybe at RPM. So having an alternator instead of a generator should really help. Having some real, real voltage should make the, you know, another volt. So from 13.4 to 14.4 or 14.6, gaining a volt would make all the lights brighter. It's got a Pertronics electronic ignition, so it should help that. Help the coil build collapse and should help it make more spark. Now I can put things like a stereo in it for my wife and if we want to put any other accessories on it, electric fan, whatever the future may hold. So tape up those loose wires and call this thing done. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Yeah, I'm going to be doing a lot of little how-tos and tech on, on all my cars and trailer. Thanks for watching today. Hope you enjoyed the video. See y'all next week.